Hello everybody, my name is Luke Marr and this is Hot La Mode and today on Hot La Mode we are coming to you with the 2023 best and worst trends according to yours truly. Listen, 2023 feels like it has lasted more than a year. Also gave us a lot of time to see, sometimes fortunately, sometimes unfortunately, a bunch of different trends that came out of the year. There were products that people loved and they wore into the ground. There were trends that sort of showed up out of the blue, were shockingly chic and experiential and enjoyable, and we got to talk about some of them. So without further ado, Let's get into it. So let's start off with the first best trend. And this is going to be like a really hot take, so prepare yourself. The Ugg Slipper. I love it. The Tasman Ugg Slipper has been seen pretty much everywhere, at least in my world. And there's just something about that funky little slipper with the embroidery around the entrance for the shoe that I just kind of really enjoyed seeing and still do. And I know you were all still thinking you missed the part where I said worst before I said Tasman Ugg Slipper, but you'd be wrong because like I really truly do kind of love them. Not on me. I don't wear them. But I like seeing them on people. I think they're fun. Maybe love is a strong word, but I do enjoy seeing them. I really think that these are a great example of the way that trends recycle themselves over the years, as honestly, I see teenagers and young adults wearing them almost on the daily now. And I'm also seeing a lot of young men wearing them, which I also think is really, really intriguing and I kind of love. And so the thing is, I did grow up in the late 2000s and the early 2010s. I'm aging myself. To the young people here, I apologize to anybody that's older than me that's like, shut up, stop talking about how old you are. But I remember when the Ugg boots were at the height of their popularity with the youth. And I'm still traumatized. But I do think the fact that these are actual slippers, which aligns with the recent burst of the Birkenstock Boston's love. I love a Birkenstock Boston. But something about the Ugg slippers have like a cozier and more versatile draw. I think that that could possibly be because they can be worn in more seasons, but also because of their rubberized soles, which allow for a much more diverse range of wear than the simple slipper sandal, which could get wrecked pretty easily. There is also the Taz slipper from Ugg, which has a thicker and higher sole and sort of builds into this platform experience, but it's still an Ugg slipper, which I have seen touted out and about, and it really only furthers this idea of actual wearability outside of the home. Now, as for why they're on the best list, I think that these slippers and their wearers don't take themselves super seriously in them. And it's not that they don't like them or they wear them as an ironic joke, but rather they're for more casual things like getting a bagel, going to Walmart, and running errands. When paired with at least here in New York, sweatpants, jackets, and hoodies, or running or denim shorts and slouchy sweaters, they just have like a cool feeling about them, at least in my mind. You know what I mean? Like I see young women wearing them and I'm like, Ooh, they're in their slippers. I'm scared. I don't want them to judge me. And not that all young women judge, but they just have like a cool feeling to them. I like it. I think you have to try a little bit with them. I, that's when I think that they are really at their best is when we have a little bit of consideration going into the look. But there's just something about seeing them out and about that radiates an energy of like, this is what the youth is into. And I'm like, okay, youth, get into it. So maybe that's a bad first love, but like, I'm being honest, can't help it. All right, so now let's get into one of the worst trends, quiet luxury, because I hate it. The idea that regular everyday people can fool the world into believing that they are in fact from old world and moneyed family is like the Rothschilds or the Sforzas is very dumb. Sorry, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but like, who are you fooling? You wouldn't know your way around a horse, a pair of skis, but you're like, ah. I wear Laura Piana. Everybody's gonna think, wow, quiet luxury. Like, come on, BFFR. And I'm not saying that I know my way around a horse or a pair of skis, I don't. But like, if I don't know, but I know that you don't know, then the people that do know are gonna know that you don't know. That makes sense. You all understand the logic. <laughs> But this, unfortunately, is the mindset of those emulating the quiet luxury trend. Now, I'm not exactly sure of the origins of the trend, but the first time I really saw the trend in action, before it was named quiet luxury, was actually when this YouTuber named Anna Bay began making content talking about what classy ladies wear. To be fair, I thought it was stupid. I still do. But then again, people take etiquette classes to learn how to use forks properly, so like, I guess it's really not 
too far-fetched of a concept. But it seems that this notion of dressing in classy clothing led to the idea of looking at fashion brands that old money society favored, like Laura Piana or Brioni and Max Mara, etc, etc, rather than the sometimes loud and in your face monograms of brands like Gucci or Louis Vuitton or Dior. I also feel that the popularity of the show Succession from HBO also contributed to this idea of ultra-luxury consciousness, even though the Roy family doesn't actually come from old money. But nonetheless, Kendall, Shiv, and Logan all brought this idea of wealth whispering what brands you should shop at. Besides from the fact that they own their own version of Fox News in their universe, this is another thing to add to the list of why they're really kind of shitty. So the thing is, I'm putting this on my worst list not because I think that buying from brands that sell good quality goods and have been utilized by wealthier people throughout history is a bad thing. I don't. I like the idea of where it's coming from. It's trying to understand that you can buy good quality product. It doesn't have to flash how much money you have and, you know, all this stuff and, oh, you're rich and you know what? Luxury brands are like the cool things to do. No, 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 no. The reason that I don't like it is because it says quiet luxury in the title and yet nobody is quiet about it. And that's my problem. Like you're defeating the purpose. You throw the key away, throw that little skeleton key from that 1740s mansion and just like chuck it because you're talking and it's very unluxury. Just the whole like quiet luxury discussion conversation has become so all consuming and not only like the idea, but the look and the theory behind it that they've lost the intrigue and the luster due to the never ending dialogue about I just genuinely find the whole thing very insufferable. The reason that most of the trends on the worst list are on the worst list is because people are annoying, not because the trend is necessarily bad. The issue is this trend has become so all-consuming in not only idea, but look and theory, and it's just like lost the intrigue and the luster due to the never-ending dialogue about it. Slowly but surely, other brands began to be lumped in with these old money brands like The Row and Kate, but with brands like Totem and others slowly beginning to crowd the market as well, and not always using materials that align with the idea of luxury, it's only going to further take a nosedive as a trend. Non-old money people will probably eventually lose their desire to look like, well, boring, snobby, and blah old money people, and then they'll find a trend that's new, and they'll move on. And the thing is, the idea of the trend is good. I like the idea of people buying things that they want to wear for a long time that doesn't scream trend. But like at the same time, like you guys just ruined trends. Like the trend was nice and now it's it's not nice. And you know, I'm just hoping that like when people move on from the trend, which they will, they just like take that quiet luxury conversation with them. Please and thank you. Now, considering I hate quiet luxury, I would say people are gonna be confused by my next best trend of the year, which I'm calling Carolyn Core, which is in reality really the inspiration of Carolyn Bissett Kennedy on the fact that people started dressing pretty minimally, pretty chicly, pretty quiet luxury, but it's actually done in a good way and it's good inspiration rather than just trying to aspire to wealth, but rather aspire to somebody that actually like was chic. So the thing is, Carolyn Core to me, is based on the 1990s wardrobe of fashion publicist Carolyn Bissett Kennedy. This is pretty much a nice way of keeping a similar energy to the quiet luxury thing. But like, again, you're just not really, like, obnoxious about it, because you're like, oh, Carolyn Bissett Kennedy, she was kind of, like, chill and low-key and didn't really want anybody to, like, be all up in her face. That's the point. Now, Carolyn was married to John F. Kennedy Jr., who was the son of John F. Kennedy and Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis, the former president and first lady. And part of what made Carolyn so cool was that she worked for Calvin Klein when he was at the height of his chic in the 1990s and did slip dresses and really minimal styles. And Carolyn's very simple and effortlessly minimal looks, which whispered her status as chic, and somebody married to a Kennedy, which is essentially like kind of American royalty, rather than demanding attention for being married to a Kennedy, seems to have invaded mood boards everywhere, and I'm not gonna cry about it. See, the thing that I loved about the trend was Carolyn Bissett Kennedy was somebody comfortable in herself, and so her really crisp white button downs, her little black slip dresses, and the effortlessly tailored coats that she had built her a really trustworthy wardrobe. But her subtle flair for blue denim or structured jackets and slip skirts and her love of corduroy made the aesthetic all her own. It kept that idea of quiet luxury, but like it was still her adding little things here and there to make it rather chic. Keep the idea of good quality clothing that you'll have for years that you can even pass down to your kids, but at the same time, like, make it your own. Don't make it a uh, cosplaying as rich people. 
because that's boring and it sucks. So listen, ditch the quiet luxury and just be quiet and let your clothing choices speak for themselves like Carolyn's did. And that is why that trend is so, so good. Another worst trend that we have to talk about the big red boots. Mischief's big red boots dominated early 2023 in terms of ridiculous pop culture fashion items and something about a pretty radical designed boot like that becoming not about the forward thinking and research and development that went into it, which I actually really admire and shout out to Mischief for doing it. But the thing is, Designers of the past few years have begun to delve into animation and video games for inspiration with Loewe's Minnie Mouse shoes going viral as well as Loewe's pixelated hoodie and its collaboration with Studio Ghibli all becoming devoured by pop culture. And slowly but surely other brands have picked up the hint that anime, cartoons, and video game nostalgia could be a smart way to bring a new demographic to see and want their product. I mean Fendi literally just launched a Pokemon capsule collection while Jimmy Choo designed a Sailor Moon inspired line so this concept is actually taking off. But the thing about Mischief's big red boots are they were inspired by one of the most iconic mangas ever created, Astro Boy, which launched in 1952, and an anime version which launched in 1964, which is seen by lovers of the genre as one of the classics. And Astro Boy's big red boots are shoes for him, but also double as a part of his kit and can become jets that help propel him through the sky to fight crime and monsters and stuff, whatever he does, I don't know. They have become a symbol of the character, and so the idea of recreating that in a real life form seems to be what the Mischief team set out to do, and when the announcement came, they instantly went viral, and that continued as the shoes were sold out within minutes and then became a source for more viral content, sometimes when the shoes would be redesigned by buyers or worn by celebrities like Janelle Monet or Doja Cat or Lil Wayne and everybody else. Now, the shoes then spurred copycat versions that are even being sold on Amazon, and which seems to still be popular months later as parents' reviews say their children are still happy to have them and wear them. Now, why I put them on the worst trend list, because I just, I feel like, touted them as like, they're kind of cool, they're fun. They are. Well, they started to become so popular and such a talking point that so many people lost respect for them, in my opinion, and their development, again, which like, it takes time to come up with a product like that. And so when they began to like, hack into them and just destroy them because they could, or like, redesign them or whatever, I like the idea, but it also just becomes like a thing. Or redesign them, which like, again, I think the idea of redesigning is cool, it's fun, it, it happens, that's great. But at the same time, I think people just like hacking things up for the purpose of like it being solely viral content really defeats the purpose of like the item actually being worn out and about. And on top of it, it became such a hot fire trend that it burned out so quickly that it almost just felt like, oh, why did we do it? Or why did we make so many and sell so many? I understand it's a business, yada, yada, yada. Great, great, great. But they just kind of lost their luster and lost their effect. Like the big yellow croc versions, I hated. I hated hated. And so like they became an unironic joke and then at the same time I feel like people wore them once or twice for like the gag of it and then they stopped wearing them immediately after because they're like actually this is ridiculous. And so I think that's why it became like a worst trend is because it was a trend that was so short-lived so hyped up that it didn't actually really get to like flesh itself out or develop itself any further and farther and that's the disappointing part. And now it's just like a kind of meme thing except for like this guy on Amazon who says his sons love it and that's great and I love that and I want that. I think that's the best thing. I appreciate the lovers. You are in fact not wearing the worst trend. People that bought it for having it and then saying, okay, well, I'm done with it now. Those worst trenders. You're on the worst trends list. That It's worst trends list for you. Next up on the best list is big pants. I am pro big, baggy, slouchy, and oversized pants. A trouser, if you will. I don't really care what people say or think about that. It's what I wear in my everyday life. It's not really a trend to me. It's just my my wardrobe, my uniform. But at the same time, like, thank God we have big pants. Because what would we do? All wear skinny jeans? Slowly over time, skinny jeans, a lot harder to fit into. You know what I mean? Unless you're really working at it. And like, I am really not working at it. Personally, I've always loved being draped in clothing that is far too big for me. That's why I wear these big cardigans all the time. And so to see carpenter pants or double knee pants and wide leg pants and big baggy jeans that are essentially Jenkos but not really Jenkos, like, I appreciate it. I think it's fun. I think it's nice. I think it's cool. There's also, like, again, a lot less pressure to, like, slip into slim fit pants. You know what I mean? And that's good. That's important. Beyonce did once say, if you don't jump to put jeans on, baby, you don't feel my pain. And she was not wrong. Just something about the idea of pants being a little bit more casual, a little bit more wearable, a little bit more work wary, a little bit less having to be so like respectable is nice and it's enjoyable. And I think it's chic and I think it's elegant. And I think that's the way that it should be. I sometimes look at 
men that do construction and labor work and on the street. And I say, listen, am I probably technically appropriating your job uniform? Yes, I am. Do I look chic doing it? Yes. Do you look chic doing it? Yeah, you look chic in your uniform. That's why I want to emulate you. I think you're a style icon. So thank you to those men and women who make these beautiful pants so, so chic and effortless that I say, that's what I look like, but I don't. But I do. I do think that by the end of the decade, we will see the slim trouser return. And so I'm just going to be rejoicing and admiring this time that we have in the relaxed pant trend and era. Now, another worst trend that we have, the luxury brand wife pleasers. The luxury fashion brand wife pleasers were a fun little moment on the runway. Honestly, I love the idea of brands creating branded versions because it validates my wearing of my wife pleasers underneath, you know, all of my clothing, literally all of my clothing. But it also felt like the more and more prevalent they got, the more and more I couldn't really take them as like a fun, lighthearted joke on the runway. I don't know about you, but like when I wear my tank tops, they are for a very functional purpose. They are my version of a chemise of the days and fashions of yore. They are a protective layer to catch sweat and for my body oils to not touch at least all the time. My nice little sweatshirts, my button downs, or my knit sweaters, okay? They are not for me to wear to the gay bar to find others that recognize luxury fashion brands monograms or to flex on the everyday person as I walk down the street. They are a utility piece and paying upwards of $150 for just one tank top, preposterous. Sorry, I don't care. I find the trend of them to now be unironic. It's almost like people that buy them don't get the joke that they are. You're wearing something that is more than likely meant to be a bit of a gag amongst those that wear them because a lot of designers that made them popular are gay men who are more than likely surrounded by them when they go out for a night on the town. And while somebody might splurge on, say, a Tommy Hilfiger version because they find the cotton less scratchy and better suited for the washing machine than, say, a Fruit of the Loom version, the idea of splurging on a singular $400 tank top to show off doesn't really equate to chic. It equates to a physical and garmental expression of the saying, a fool and their money are soon parted. So sorry, not sorry. Also, as soon as the armpit sweat sets in underneath your white luxury tank top, it's toast. It's done. It has a stain. Get it out? You can't. Now you just wasted $400. And that's why I don't do that. Because it's silly. Now, another best trend that I would say is the hot pants trend. And this is, again, yet another question we'll take. I get it. But I think that the no pants or hot pants trend was one of the better ones. Listen, love it or hate it, the 2020s needs to have some fashion trends that define the era. And while this could or could not be one of them, I would love to see this as a footnote in the history of the decade's fashion. Listen, the resurgence of the 1970s dance and youth staple, the hot pan, really became big when Bottega Veneta showed it on the runway for their spring 2023 collection. And slowly but surely, all the paparazzi gals like Bella Hadid and Kendall Jenner participated in the look throughout 2022, but as 2023 rolled around, it gained quite a bit of steam. I mean, Miu Miu created embellished versions in gold and pink, Hailey Bieber wore them under her big wool Saint Laurent coats, and Lori Harvey tucked her vintage band tee into her hot pants. Listen, it's whack a do time for the fashion gang in terms of the trend, but why not be a little experimental and have a bit of fun with it, you know what I mean? Like, that's why I like it. It's kooky, it's weird, it's ridiculous, but like, sometimes, kooky, weird, and ridiculous can work. Now listen, another worst trend, motor racing jackets. Sorry, it's so rare that I personally think a motor racing jacket is cool. They have to be precisely fit to the body, and they also usually have to be by the designer Dion Lee for me not to get a piercing chill when I initially see them. That's also why I wear my non-luxury tank tops, is because when I get that chill and then I start to have a cold sweat, it's not getting all over everything and I'm not wasting $400. Everybody wins, see? Something about the trend that has been pushed by celebrities and designers at the end of 2022, which led into 2023, was just, I don't know, for me personally, unappealing. It's a personal hate, I get that, but so rarely are the jackets themselves chic that it makes it hard to find ones that someone can wear well. And usually the original styles are big and baggy and have hideous patches all over them, but then they're also in these awful colors, which makes sense you know, considering you want to be able to spot a motocross rider from a distance, you know, to watch them actually moto and cross. But random human walking down the street with eye-catching but eye-clashing placement of colors on a black leather jacket is not only awful to look at, but also distracting to me because they're so downright hideous, I might not be able to take my eyes off of them. And then I might also possibly walk into oncoming traffic and then get hit by a car or a vehicle or a moving vehicle. I don't know. And who wins? You in an ugly jacket? No, you don't. 
The people that hate me because they just got hit by a car, probably they win. But listen, the one thing that I'll say is as long as this is okay and as long as this is okay, you're not getting rid of me. So yeah, celebrities that are wearing the moto jackets trying to push that trend, don't believe it. You know what I mean? Don't. It's okay. Stick with your own stuff. That's not a moto jacket. Unless you're a moto jacket wearer all the time in terms of you actually have motocrossed something, then wear it. Please, be my guest. Now, another good, solid, best trend I would say is the Samba. 2023 was the year of the Adidas Samba's return. The simple yet effective sneaker by German sportswear giant Adidas on its own seemed to have come to be the go-to casual sneaker this year. It was originally developed in 1949 by Adidas as a shoe that would allow football players, soccer players for the Americans, to play on icy and hard terrains and have become one of the staple shoes of the brand in the following decades. Now the thing is, the Samba wasn't exactly popular in recent years until British designer Grace Wells Bonner of the brand Wales Bonner announced her collaboration with Adidas in 2020 and gave the shoe a bit of a renaissance. During her fall 2020 collection, she showcased black sambas with oversized tongues that lazily draped themselves over the laces of the shoe, and slowly but surely her collaboration became a hotly anticipated drop time after time. Celebrities started to pick up on the trend with everyone from Frank Ocean to Kendall Jenner to Hailey Bieber all sporting them over the past three years, but the amazing thing about them is they're still beloved. Normally, trends tend to peter out rather quickly in the age of TikTok and algorithms, but alas, the Samba seems like it might become the Air Force Ones of the Adidas catalog, not always at the forefront of the zeitgeist, but always an option. And with Wells Bonner continually hammering out sold-out collaboration after sold-out collaboration, I have a feeling it really won't be bowing out gracefully anytime soon, so I might not be personally a Samba-er, I like to Samba, but you know, wearing the Sambas might not be for me, but like, I respect it. I think it's a solid trend. All right, next up, Barbie core. Margot Robbie's method dressing to promote her Barbie film for 2023 was a smashing success. Her and her stylist, Andrew Mukamal, understood the assignment and utilized her star power and references to vintage Barbie fashion, but it seemed that the iconic Barbie pink was the thing most people took away from this whole notion. And many turned out in droves to attend the Barbie movie in full looks of decadent pinks, but I think it was best left there exclusively. Here's the thing, we've been getting like in your face pink, like blinding pink, for quite a few seasons. And so I feel like this year, it really became like more of a mainstream thing because of Barbie and people's love of Barbie and all that. And that's great. And I want you to love Barbie and I'm happy for you to love Barbie. And the, 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 but at the same time, I don't really want to see like all pink everything sometimes, especially if it's in that like vibrant highlighter pink, keep that shit to yourself. Keep it in your closet, wait five years and then bring it back. But like right now, no. Stop, okay? You wore it to go see the movie. That's great. Love that for you. That's wonderful. I don't want to see Barbie core unless you're referencing like 1965 Barbie. Then Barbie core it up. Barbie core the shit out of it. All pink Barbie, bit boring, bit unoriginal. Next up on the best list, we have bows and ribbons. Listen, bows really took over 2023. I think that none of us can deny it. And many attribute it to the year of the girl, in which quite a few different trends on this list also coincide with. I mean, like Barbie core, I would say to a degree, you know, things like that. And seeing as how I've never experienced girlhood or womanhood, I'm not gonna try to mansplain it to anybody except to say it seems like a return to a time with a little bit more lightheartedness and whimsy. Maybe that was mansplaining, and if so, I apologize. Maybe it was not lighthearted and whimsical. I apologize. I'm sorry. But see, the bow trend has mostly been attributed to the New York-based designer Sandy Liang, whose bows have been a staple in her collections, and she's also very much so got the hold on the youth. I mean, she did like a Bagu collaboration. She did a collaboration for like a home, and then they had bows kind of everywhere. They had it on their rugs and their bags. But I would also like to add that designers like Simone Rocha and Pierpaolo Piccioli of Valentino have also delivered both the pieces season after season to the delight of many as well. And slowly but surely, the bow and the less constricting ribbon began to find its way just about everywhere from bags to hair to makeup to shoes. And to be honest, it was pretty fun to say. The thing is, bows and ribbons are an amazing pathway to creativity. And I would even say, for the most part, no two bows or ribbons can be tied the same. Someone might have to scientifically verify that, which I'm okay with. Please be my guest bow research, very important. But there's just something about the fact that bows and ribbons can look however we want, which makes them so much more fun. There are going to be gothic bows and futuristic bows and holiday bows and sexy bows and unsexy bows and big bows and little bows and sheer bows and unsheer bows and opaque bows, any kind of bow you want. 
it's a possibility. And the same goes for the ribbon, which is a little bit less constricting than the bow because the bow has to be sort of a bow shape, whereas a ribbon can be tied in a bunch of different ways and lends itself to much more intrigue and interest too. I just find that the bow and the ribbon trend is actually giving people the ability to express themselves through like freedom and also there's a bit of individuality built into it as well and I think it makes it one of the most chic trends on this list because the possibilities are endless the creativity is endless anything can be done with them and so that is the end of our best and worst trends of 2023 let's talk about a best and a worst listen the best bows I just think that it lends to a lot of excitement and creativity and coolness and fun and it was really fun to see and as for the worst quite luxury be quiet about your luxury thank you so much we appreciate it. No need to talk about it. Let me know what you guys thought of these trends or if I missed out on any of the trends that we really should be discussing. And I will see you guys in the next video. Hopefully you'll be back for the 2024 trends video that we're going to do so we can get into all the little niches and nits and what's going to come up. And um, I will see you guys in the next one. So T-T-Y-L.